So we've got super special uh, guest today, a uh, Barbarian Hour short with uh, Jesse Delavecchia. Jesse, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good, man. Uh, so Jesse is the assistant coach, was the assistant coach at Army West Point this past year in his first year of coaching. And now, Jesse, you recently moved to Long Island University Post. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, I started right. about two months ago. And yeah. Okay. How long is LIU Post? How far is LIU Post from where your hometown is? It's about 40 minutes um, coming home. Sometimes I hit traffic, so it takes a little longer. Long Island traffic's not too great, but um, yeah, it's an easy drive. We call it, we're, we're, people I talk to, they call it the Strong Island, right? Is that right? Did I get that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went to a concert at the Nassau Coliseum. Uh, I went to Roger Waters in 2017 with Brendan Buckley, the head coach, or the head, uh, he's the executive director of Beat the Streets, and it was one of the best concerts I've ever been to. Hmm. Good time. How far are you from Nassau Coliseum? Uh, same thing, probably around 40 minutes. Yeah. So I was just in the city. Were you at the event for the, uh, beat the streets? No, I actually, I really wanted to go, but, uh, kind of just been, uh, training for this match. So, um, yeah, I've been doing maybe a little too much. Just, I got a lot of stuff going on right now between coaching clinics, privates, training on my own so I got a lot going on right now so I didn't really have too too much time or energy but um I watched from home so yeah okay so you were a national finalist last year for the Ryder Bronx Nick Badlands of Kent State Golden Flash so shout out to him he's the one who gave me your contact info Hange he's a good dude I like all those guys over there easy to deal with uh but they uh coach Wolf too right Wolf's there isn't he yep but they, that you are national finalists. Are you the first national NCAA finalist in the history of Ryder program? I am. We had a bunch of dudes in the semis, um, some really close uh, finalists before then, but uh, no one ever like won that semi match. A lot of close ones just kind of couldn't break it, uh, break the semis. So yeah, it was the first one. And you beat this year's champ in the semis. You beat Ryan Deacon in the semis, right? In overtime? Uh, I pinned him. You pin? No, you pinned him. That's right, because it was right next to the coaching chairs. And I remember Badleon like smacked you, or you smacked who smacked who? I forget. <laughs> yeah, Badleon smacked me. He's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. That was a cool moment because it was you know it's a program first, and then to do it you know against Deacon, who's massive for the weight and the champ this year. I mean, obviously there's some redemption this year because if you think about it, this year's NCAA tournament, you, you know if you think about it with all the six years, you could have came back for a seventh. You had some eight, you had an eight year guy, an Olympian, right? It was the toughest on paper, probably the toughest NCAA tournament in history, arguably. Right. Yeah. I mean, pretty much no one uh, graduated besides uh, a few guys that didn't want to come back. So it was probably, yeah, if not the, the toughest tournament ever NCAA tournament. And then, so you were in a sixth year last year, you had a seventh year, why didn't you come back for the seventh year this year? Um, so pretty much, I mean, I, I, I loved it. But, uh, I mean, after my fifth year, like, I pretty much said, no matter what, I'm not coming back. And then that year, COVID canceled it. And I was like, a month later, I still really wasn't sure if I wanted to come back, even after my senior year getting canceled. And then uh, about a month or two later, I was like, I, I got to give it one more try. So going into it, I mean, um, I was fully committed, but I was kind of ready to be done. So when I um, kind of, um, whatever, applied for that sixth year, because um, I medically withdrew from Binghamton my freshman year, so I still had to get that sixth year back. So I got it back. And then since I had another year of eligibility, I also got a COVID year. So then I got two years from that one year back, which makes no sense. So, <laughs> None. Um, yeah. Uh, you said um, it, not me. Thank you, though. I appreciate that. <laughs> it just didn't make yeah. sense. So you come back for your sixth year. You make the NCAA finals for Ryder. You make program history. And you're just – dude, listen, I told you, after five years, I wasn't at your level, right? I was like a two-time Mac placer, you know? 
uh, <laughs> I was done, man. I was like, I want to teach high school. I'm ready to be done. My body hurt. You did. They were asking you to do it beyond another year beyond that. I mean, that's, that's a big ask. Don't you think? Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, um, I kept my body in pretty good shape, like really very fortunate. I didn't have many injuries in college, some little things like sprained ankle, torn meniscus, um, but nothing too crazy where uh, I couldn't wrestle in college anymore. Kind of go through that uh, the brutal preseason and, and wrestling season. So my body was okay. I was just, um, I guess, eager to be done with school. I was really just not a school person. Also felt a little uh, behind in life a little bit. I mean, I was 24, 24 years old. If I did my seventh year, I would have been close to turning 25, 25 in May. So um, I was ready to start making some money, get my uh, coaching career started. And um, yeah, I was more kind of focused on that than competing. So my heart really wasn't into it as much. And I knew that going to, if I was going to do my seventh year, I, I really wouldn't have been into it as much. And um, I really still have no regrets. So I think I made the right decision. So the itch, I'm sure, started needing to be scratched a little bit for competition. So that's where stalemates kind of comes into it, right? <laughs> stalemates comes into it. Talk about the process working with Zach Bogle and stalemates and, and getting on to the street league card for street league number three, June 24th in Des Moines, Iowa versus Kennedy Monday. Yeah. So he reached out and um, asked if I wanted to wrestle and gave me like what month, maybe a month and a half notice. And the thing is with coaching is you always stay in pretty good shape and I'm really into lifting. So I, I was always lifting, doing private lessons, training with the LIU guys. So um, my, I was already in good shape. So pretty much um, the last few weeks, all I had to really do was kind of just get some harder goes in, blow my lungs out a little bit. And uh, that's all I really had to do to get into shape, like, I mean, mat shape. So I'm pretty much ready. I feel good. I really didn't have to change too much because I was training already a lot. So, um, yeah. And, um, yeah, he reached out and a chance to compete, um, one match. I was like, why not? Just have some fun. Um, that's something that I preach to the guys on the team. Something I preach at West Point a lot is you do this because it's, it's fun and you love it. So, I mean, when he reached out, I was like, why not? Just go out there, have fun, wrestle seven minutes, make a little bit of money. And, and uh, yeah, why not? So I'm excited. Don't really even have to cut any weight. Like, the yeah, what's your weigh in? 70? 170. Um, I wanted to go a little lighter because I only weigh like 170 in the morning. But, uh, I mean, I think, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but I, I think I'm a way better wrestler than Kennedy. So I was like, I don't care about the weight too much. I, I, I think I'm the better guy. So either way, um, what, an extra five or 10 pounds doesn't really matter. And he's training MMA in, uh, in Los Angeles, I believe. I know he's here in Ohio with his dad right now. I saw him at the UW or U23s. So Kennedy – is kind of moved on. He was, I think he was a lot like you in the sense that I think he was ready to move on, but it was wild though. Cause he went into the transport portal cause he has another year due to COVID. Right. I don't know if you saw that. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. So he, he was a 65 and you were a 57, correct? Mm -hmm. So any NCAA tournament that you guys did wrestle one NCAA tournament, the same, right? He was 65. You were 57. Is that correct? Yeah. So you guys have never crossed paths then? Nope. I actually, I mean, you might know this, but I wrestled his brother twice. His brother was a 57 pounder um, yeah, Quincy Monday. So we wrestled, but I never wrestled Kennedy. What was the result versus Quincy? <laughs> uh, we're one and one. Uh, I beat him the first match. He beat me the second match. Listen uh, to what I was just going to say. If you were two and oh, you beat, you would, you did, you had, but you're not undefeated against all the NCAA finalists this past year at 157. You were two and one against the NCAA finalists this past year, correct? Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. And those guys, listen, oh, historically, one of the toughest weights and one of the, you know, it's a middle weight, right? And one of the most historically toughest NCAA tournaments. So I think that says a lot for you, Jesse. I think that that is a pretty solid uh, resume of victories there. Um, we know that he's MMA. We know that Richie Lewis is MMA. So we've got some MMA guys coming back, right? 
We got some MMA guys coming back. I listen. I want the winner of you and uh, Kennedy versus the winner of Richie Lewis Ian Miller. How do you feel about that? How good would that be? Oh, I'd love that. Um, <laughs> when Richie, uh, when Marinelli dropped out uh, with the Richie Lewis match. Right away, I, I reached out to Zach and asked if I could wrestle them both in the same night because originally I was supposed to wrestle Richie and uh, it, it didn't work out, but um, I would have loved that match too. I mean, he's a gamer, he's tough, but uh, I just think I'm better. Um, so I wanted to wrestle them both, but they found a replacement for him. But yeah, that would be a, that's, that's a sick idea and um, maybe next card can make that happen. Yeah, I just made that up. I just made that up. So I think it's a great idea. <laughs> just made that up. But just talking, I got to talk to Zach today on the phone. And you know, I like Zach. Zach's a good dude. And obviously what, what Stalemates is doing. And I like the opportunity. I like what the cards are. It's um, it's really cool to bring in. You got like a Colton McChrystal who's coming back. You got Grant Leith who's coming back. You got all these other guys who are coming back. And I'm an Ohio guy. So I'm biased. We're going to have Sam White. He's a Maslin Perry guy. He's coming back as assistant coach. And Mount Union, we got Moises Guillen. He's a multiple-time national qualifier for Ohio U. So I'm kind of excited to just see those guys in the card. And then there's just going up and down the cards. You know, there's guys who've been out of it for five, ten years. And Zach talked about how he likes to bring. You know, there's a lot of guys who wrestled in different eras are now going to wrestle. I like that. I think that's cool. Obviously, you and Kennedy are the same era, just different weights. But um, it is a five-minute match. So I know you're wrestling seven minute matches. It's only a five minute match. You know that, right? No, no, it's seven minutes. Yours is, yours is seven. Yeah. So I mean, that's I, I think that's why um, me and Richie didn't end up didn't end up wrestling is because he wanted to wrestle one two two. Got it. And uh, I was like, let's do a like a college match. Like let's do three two two. Um, and I'm not sure if that's why I turned it down or not, but. Um, same thing with Kennedy. He, I think he wanted a two, two, two. And, um, I was like, let's do a three, two, two match. Like, I mean, seven minutes of wrestling. It's, I mean, that's, it's a lot. It's tiring, but yeah, real tiring. Um, if I'm, I'm fine all the way out to Iowa. I don't want to wrestle five minutes. I want to wrestle a whole match. I think Ian's match versus, uh, uh, Richie's match is a five minute match is what my understanding was on the phone this morning. So you, yeah, that probably was, there probably was a, you guys couldn't meet, right? It's just how it goes. But, um, and Richie's training MMA. Where does Richie train MMA? Does he train over on the East coast by you guys? I don't know. I don't I'm really know not sure. training either. I haven't, cause he's a Jersey guy though. Yeah. He's a Jersey guy and he went to Iowa central. He was a Juco national champion. He's a world champ. So, yep. and then Kennedy is from Stillwater. He went to Stillwater high school and then UNC, Ian's Ohio guy, Kent State guy. So I'm excited. I'm just excited to see all the different matchups. And then Colton McChrystal versus Leith is going to be a good matchup. So anything else up and down the lineup besides you and Kennedy that excites you? Um, really just the main event. I'm excited to see that. Grant Leith, he's a gamer too. We've talked in the past. He's, he's a good dude. So I'm excited to watch him wrestle too. But, I mean, like I said, I have, I have a lot going on right now where it feels like a lot for me. So – um, kind of just been focusing on myself a little bit, just kind of getting these LIU guys ready, training four or five times a week with them. And then, um, yeah, kind of training harder for myself right now, just getting some, I did a, a preseason workout that we used to do at Ryder the other day. And that was, that was tough. It was, uh, what's it called? Just bringing back memories of training hard again and, and going through, uh, those tough practices, but it's good. I'm, uh. I feel ready. Is LIU the Sharks? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. And they're like a baby blue that's color, right? That's a sick, kind of a sick colorway, yeah? Dude, that's sick. Yeah, I want, yeah, I want one of those shirts. Listen to me. I'm going to be in Des Moines. Bring a Fat Man Double X if you can. Can you? I can make that happen, yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. EIWA, right? You guys are going to qualify out of the EIWA, is that correct? Mm-hmm. So you qualified at Ryder out of the Mac, your Mac champ. Were you were you the four seed the year that they canceled due to COVID? Yeah. Yeah, I really liked where you were in the bracket. I'm a Mac guy, right? I'm a Mac homer. I'm a Kent State guy. So 
I love when Mac guys make it happen like you made it happen. I, you were the kind of the story of the tournament for me. And then the Mac went over this year. You know that, right? They didn't have an All-American. Wow. Yeah. That's I, I wild. Didn't know that. Yeah. That's wild. I mean, Missouri left. Yeah. So uh, that was a big one because, I mean, I think my senior year, they had nine guys in the finals. So, I mean, oh they were pretty much the, the, uh, obviously clearly the best team in the, in the conference. So, I mean, that, that hurt the conference a little bit, but I mean, central Michigan, you had that heavyweight, um, you had a bunch of other good guys and then some of the rider boys are tough that could definitely make it happen. So I think next year, um, they'll have better results. LIU post can qualify next year, right? You guys are, you're able to qualify, right? Yeah. So what's the goals for you as a coach, a young coach coming in, coming back home, you know, you're from Long Island. It's a, it's a program that added division one wrestling. I mean, what, three years ago? Yeah. Three years ago. Three years ago. Talk about, you know, what being back in Long Island means to you and the pride of Long Island. Dude, when I meet people from Long Island, there's a theory that the sun's the center of the earth. It's called the heliocentric theory. I got the strong Island theory that that's the center of the universe. When I talk to <laughs> long Island people, right. Um, you know, there's a lot of great people who've been from long Island, who uh, obviously in division one wrestling, Tom Ryan's long Island, right? Yep. Are the Bannock brothers long Island? Did I get that right? I don't think so. They're not long. Island. who's long Island. Somebody from Iowa wrestled this long Island. I'm like, how did that guy go to Iowa? I got to see if the Bannocks uh, are from Iowa or from uh, Long Island. I think they are, dude. I, oh, I don't know. If got Kerry I... McCoy. Kerry McCoy, Kerry yeah. McCoy's from Long Island. Um, got Jesse Jansen, another big one. Jeez, oh, Pete. Um, definitely missing some some guys, but yeah, I mean, a lot of tough wrestlers come out of Long Island. Strong Island. <laughs> right? Hold on. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I should be calling it more. Calling call it Strong Island more. Strong Island. Hold but, on. Uh, they they are from Port Jarvis, New York. They moved to Port Jarvis, New York, uh, where the boys all became involved. Is that is that Long Island? No, nah, no. Nah. Where, where's Port Jarvis? Somewhere upstate. That's upstate. Okay. I don't know what section. Oh, they're in New there, York, yeah. though. At least I got that they were in New York. <laughs> I thought they were Strong Island. Dang it. I missed that. But Tom Ryan's Long Island, right? Kerry McCoy's Long Island. Um, dude, there's a lot more. Um, where is Hofstra? Um, I'm not sure what town, but it's, uh, it's in Nassau. So it's so technically it's Long two, Island. Uh, yeah. There's two counties on Long Island, Nassau and Suffolk. They're okay. Nassau County. Okay. And then you guys do the, they do the, uh, you wrestle in your state final and you wear your section singlet, don't you in New York? Yeah. You, you like can that. wear your high school singlet, but I, I like the, the Section 11 singlet, which is Suffolk County. Um, that singlet's cool. I mean, it's something that growing up, you always want to wear going into the state tournament. So, I mean, I think anyone from Suffolk County picks that over their, their high school singlet. Is that the like, uh, is that almost like a Penn State looking singlet? A white Penn State? Yeah, singlet? exactly. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Green Toe is from Strong Island. I, I don't know how I didn't miss. I miss Green Toe. Green Toe is from Strong Island, yeah? Uh, I'm not sure. Dylan Palacio. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he's yeah, Green he's Toe. Have you ever seen his toes? <laughs> I think so. They're disgusting. Yeah, I know he has some gross-looking feet. <laughs> he's, where's he from? <laughs> Long Island. Long Beach? He's from Long Beach. It's, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, Teamer. Teamer's Long Island, isn't he? Jacory? And he's from Long Beach as well. Oh, oh yeah. okay. So they're same high school. Yep. Oh man, you guys got some. You got some characters out of Long Island, dude. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, Vito Arujo. He's from Long Island too. Wait, who was the last one? Vito Arujo. Oh, Vito's from Long Island via via yeah. Russia. Yeah. Because yeah. dad dad is from like Dagestan area, yeah. Azerbaijan, Dagestan, I believe, somewhere around in that area. Something I believe. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Is his club actually in Long Island? Is Vogar's club in Long Island? Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. You got some freaking scrapping going on out there. It is. Oh, yeah. The fur flies in, in Long Island, yeah? <laughs> the fur flies, yeah? I mean, people, it gets heated. You go to a dual meet between Long Island and 
any other – like what are the two best high schools there? Um, in my time, I mean, usually Wontaw is pretty dominant. They're um, a Section 8 team, so Nassau County. Um, Long Beach is tough there from there, too. Oh, Gillespie but, um, Brothers. Gillespie Brothers are from Wontaw, aren't they? Yep. Jesus. So is Tom dude, Ryan. Dude, dude, we're going to keep going, and we're just going to keep going. Because then um, isn't uh, uh, Weidman from there? I think Weidman's from Wontaw as well, yeah. Oh, my God. He's from Long Island. Wow. I could be wrong on that, though. But he's Long I'm Island, exactly I believe. Too. Definitely Long Island. Because he's Hofstra. Uh, not. Oh, man. Dude, that's wild. Freaking Strong Island, Strong Island for a reason. <laughs> I feel like yeah. sad now because now I need to go through all the rosters and figure out who's from Long Island And it because it's, it's so tradition-rich in wrestling. Um, New York just started letting kids come to the Ironman in the last, like, three or four years, didn't they? Yeah, I know some uh, New York guys that went. Usually we were – Pretty much just wrestle in state tournaments and then eastern states well that's in state as well but um yeah really we're not like pa or some other states where we kind of travel a lot um which is probably why i mean there's so much more dominant wrestling way better competition throughout the season but um yeah I love stay it. in state i love it i gotta go over to the strong island again for a concert and come check you guys out but get me a shirt in at stalemate street league three jesse delavecchia do you have anything else for me sir anything else on your matchup with kenny monday june 24th on stalemates is there anything else you got for me shout out to, to strong island anything liu post anything you got to talk about anything else you got i mean i'll talk about liu just a little bit because we didn't really touch up on that too much but um i mean just getting here i'm i'm fired up i'm super excited working with these guys. I mean, we have a lot of tough freshmen. Um, and the most important thing is that a lot of them are all in. Um, they trust me. They, they really want it. They kind of understand what it takes to, uh, you know, become a division one, all American national champ. So they have that mentality, they have that trust and, and we're working hard this summer. So you got about six, seven guys, um, staying on campus. Um, we wanted to kind of make it mandatory, but with their school, it was tough. But, I mean, we had seven guys who are serious and said, you know what, we'll, we'll stay here. We'll, we'll find a job, live on campus, and we'll train all summer. So um, I love that we got a bunch of guys in the room. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I have some high expectations for them. And I think right away we can have a few national qualifiers and then throughout the year um, have some All-Americans. I can't see – why we can't do that. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy to be here and, and uh, coaching at LIU. How far, what is the actual town and where's the physical campus located of LIU post? It's in Belleville. Belleville. Um, yeah. How far from the city? 30, 30, 40 minutes. You're that close to the city. Yeah. It's not a bad drive you can drive to the city that fast. I'm saying like train bus. Cause that's what a lot of everybody I talked to at the event, a lot of them lived in like Jersey city or Hoboken. And they, they talked about taking the bus to the train and it was like 45 minutes or an hour. You're that close. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to drive to the city cause I mean, finding parking is a pain in the butt, but um, yeah, if you leave at a good time, I mean, either really early or really late, you won't hit much traffic. You can probably find a spot. So, um, yeah, driving's not ideal, but pretty close, pretty close to it. So, um, but I, I really don't like the city too much. Uh, I'm barely there. <laughs> I don't think the city's city for person. everybody. Like I just told you, I'm back here cutting trails with my brush hog, and uh, <laughs> I'd way rather be back here cutting trails than in uh, New York, man. And no offense to New York City, but it's just like I'm just like you. It's just not for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, too many people. It, it's the, 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 the overload of stimulation of, of noise and hustle and bustle is just – it's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's like – and you're like a, a guy like me. I'm from the country. I'm like, oh, my – it's overwhelming, right? Yeah. But you got to see it. You got to go, right? I mean, you got to – you can't just never go there. It's the center of human civilization on earth in our time, right? I mean, I, you're kind of cheating yourself if you don't. But, yeah, I mean – people travel across the country just to see there, see it. So definitely I probably only go once, twice a year. I mean, a couple of my buddies just uh, 
moved to the New York City, so I've been there a little more this year. But um, unless I'm hanging out with them, I'm I'm not going there. <laughs> and it's massive too. It's five boroughs. We got Staten Island, we got Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, and it's massive. And I don't think people get that how there's five boroughs. They don't understand the five boroughs. They don't understand how they're connected. They don't understand how you get one to the other. Everybody just thinks it's Manhattan, which Manhattan has a bunch of different neighborhoods. And there's Harlem, there's Spanish Harlem, there's Midtown, there's Downtown, there's Uptown, there's Chelsea Piers. There's all these different places that you can go in Manhattan that aren't even the other five boroughs. And people don't even know that, right? Like, because I, I like try and explain that to people. And my dad, you know, my dad, he, he, he doesn't understand that. He doesn't get that. He's out driving the John Deere tractor. He don't get five boroughs. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's pretty cool. if you were to cut a promo, and you were to do what these UFC guys do or these WWE guys do. Could you do that? Could you trash talk Kennedy? Could you do that? Or is that not, a, not in the cards for you? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm really not that kind of person. I'm pretty uh, laid back, mellow. But um, it's part of it. I mean, some people have built careers, especially in the UFC, just uh, by a little – shit talking i mean colby covington's a big one he was going to get cut from the ufc even though he was winning fights and and doing well and yeah you know, he knew he was going to get cut after his fight so he kind of started talking crap and all of a sudden he gets a new contract he's fighting for a ufc title and his uh his career changed so i mean it's definitely important especially in that field but unless it was um something that i was going to do full-time or as a career I don't think I'm just going to, you know, um, do a little shit talking for uh, just one or maybe a few other matches in the future. So I'm not going to kind of sell my soul just for, just for that, but it's definitely something that's uh, important. could probably sell myself a little better in other ways, but um, yeah, I guess I just got to get creative. What about just good hard wrestling and just smashing them? Yeah, that works as well. <laughs> and that was a plan, so. <laughs> yeah, because I asked Ian, I was like, hey, you got anything, any trash talked about Richie? And he's like, yeah, I, that's not my thing. <laughs> I, I'll do that. Yeah. That's not my thing. And he's like, yeah, I'm a college coach still. I still got a job. I'm not trying to get in the, you know, the get in the weeds with somebody. You know, you, you, get, you get in the weeds and you get dirty, right? You get dirty down in the mud with somebody and you get out in the weeds. And sometimes your, your employer don't like that, right? <laughs> yeah that's the point i want to put this out as, as many places as i can and i want you know what i mean that's what i want I'm, as a promoter right that's what i do so but dude i'll take it i'll take it ian you you and ian are on the same page and uh no trash talk maybe i can get kennedy and richie to to trash talk you too so we'll see anything else for me boss nah, that's really about it i mean i mean i'm excited to compete and what it's 11 days now so kind of just getting ready for that and yeah i'm pumped Ready to go. All right. Jesse Delavecchia versus Kennedy Monday on one of the co-main events. I'd like to call it the co-main event. I think that's the co-main event. Let's just call it the co-main event alongside Richie Lewis versus Ian Miller. June 24th, Des Moines, Iowa on Stalemates. Check it out. Check out barbarianapparel.com, the Barbarian Hour. Jesse, thank you for the time, and good luck. Stick around. <laughs>